I'm 66 years old in less than two months. And despite the fact that I'm super fit and healthy, age is taking its toll, especially when it comes to preserving my muscle mass at the level I'd like to maintain. That's why later this year, I'm spending $50,000 on two experimental gene therapies shown to boost muscle mass and target aging at the cellular level. And because they're not FDA approved, I'm flying to a specialist clinic in Honduras where I can legally receive these treatments. And in this short presentation, I'm going to outline exactly what gene therapies I'll be receiving and the benefits I expect to obtain. And please don't let the cost put you off because these therapies will eventually be available at a tiny fraction of these prices following wider uptake. But first, we need enough human lab rats willing to test the long-term efficacy and safety of these treatments. And that's the reason why biohackers like myself have no issue taking the initial risk and why you don't have to. Which may appear foolhardy to some, but without the risk takers, the reality is little real progress in the longevity space is ever made. And as I'm already pushing the boundaries in several other areas, this next step is a logical progression for me. So let me explain exactly what I've got planned. My plan is a two-pronged attack on aging at the cellular level. The first therapy targets a protein called folistatin. And I'll tell you what that does in a minute. But first to be clear, I'm not injecting folistatin directly. That doesn't work. What I'll be receiving is a tiny loop of DNA called a plasmid. And this plasmid contains the genetic instructions for making folistatin. Once injected, it enters my cells and essentially reprograms them to become folistatin factories. My own body will then manufacture this protein for the following 12 months or so. So what does folistatin do, I hear you ask? Well, it blocks myostatin, your body's natural brake pedal for muscle growth. The problem is that after a certain age, that brake is permanently on. However, this therapy releases that brake, allowing my body to build and more importantly, preserve muscle mass like it did decades ago, thereby counteracting the effects of age-related muscle loss, which we know is a key driver of aging. The early data shows an average two pound lean mass increase and a 12 year drop in epigenetic age. And of course, implementing this therapy alongside a weightlifting program and a high protein diet will likely boost results considerably. This isn't just theory. Tech pioneer Brian Johnson is doing it, reporting a 7% gain in muscle mass, which if true is a huge increase. Plus over 500 people have now received this therapy with zero serious adverse events reported. The second therapy I'll be receiving in Honduras works the same way, but targets a different protein called VEGF, which stands for Vascular Endothelial Growth Factor. Again, I'm not injecting VEGF directly. I'm injecting the genetic instructions that tell my cells to produce it. Now, if folistatin therapy is the muscle builder, VEGF is the fuel supply. As we age, our internal plumbing gets old. Blood flow to our muscles and organs decreases, starving them of oxygen and nutrients. VEGF acts like a fertilizer for your blood vessels, telling your body to grow new ones. Now in Russia, this is actually an approved drug called Neovasculgin. And in their clinical studies, patients with poor circulation could walk 177% farther without pain. Their blood flow literally came back to life. So this therapy is all about feeding the new muscle that I intend to build. Now to support these therapies, I'll also be using advanced filler-free longevity supplements from Do Not Age. And I'm super happy to have an exclusive 10% discount code for you that will work for all Do Not Age products, including subscriptions and special offers. Enjoy. Now I know the first question you likely have, and that is, isn't gene therapy permanent and incredibly risky? And you'd be right to have concerns. But here's the key point. Unlike conventional gene therapies, these plasmids don't integrate into my chromosomes and they don't change my permanent genetic code. They actually sit inside my cells as separate instructions. And after about 12 months, they naturally dilute and fade away as cells divide. So you see, in this case, it's completely reversible. If I don't like the results, I simply don't repeat the treatment. This is a critical point and it gives me control. But what about the immediate risks? Well, for the folistatin therapy, about a third of patients see a small, manageable bump in their LDL cholesterol. That I can easily handle with my diet. And for the VEGF, the theoretical risk is unwanted blood vessel growth, particularly in the eyes. But let's look at the data. In the Russian studies with over 200 patients, there were zero cases of this, not one. So for me, at least, the risk profile is acceptable in light of the potential rewards. 
So that essentially is my $50,000 bet. I bet that the science is ready. I bet that we don't have to accept a slow decline as inevitable. Now we'll be documenting this entire journey, the pretreatment blood work, the trip to the clinic in Honduras, the procedures themselves, and the results. I'll be tracking my muscle mass, my strength, my blood markers, and my energy levels with cold, hard data. This is my personal experiment, and I'm inviting you to watch it unfold. So subscribe to the channel, and let's see what's really possible. Many thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments if these therapies are something you might consider yourself in the future, or do you consider it a step too far? Lastly, as always, take care, be healthy, and I'll see you again soon.